Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanali the Dun. Once again, I am Shadow Fury 333, your host, and this is the second match between El Torero and Aquanim that was played. And as for the last match, yes, I'm aware that El Torero is Spanish, not French, but rolling your R's is a thing that most Romance languages have, if not all. Anyway, we are on into battle, and the first match was Aquanim winning with a Mace Commander Rush, Rocket Commander Rush. This match, I don't know. Where are they going to go for a rush? Usually you don't, although Akinem is going for jump bots against El Torero's light vehicles. And that is... well, light vehicles? Makes sense in this map. Jump bots have just been popular recently. They've just been the thing. Basically since the Firewalker buff, and actually, they've been popular decently for a little while, but the Firewalker buff was huge. That's given a lot of people reason to play at them. It's been a nice change. Although admittedly, I don't like the impression that jump bot really has a huge amount of options. I mean, they have Pyros, but Pyros cover so much of the early game. Puppies do as well to an extent, but I, f I don't know. They're kind of usually limited to either mass puppies to smash things, or early on in the cloak key versus jump up matchup in order to make sure that Glaives don't actually do anything. And even then, they aren't used too often. They work, well pretty in that they work pretty well in that matchup, though, as doing that. But yeah, then after that, it's like, moderator if you can, moderator placeholder... Firewalker has been nice that it's been useful, though. At least there has been that option. But yeah, Jump Bot, despite the fact that, it, you know, you have the all-terrain factor, it's kind of a slower factory. I, as far as the bot factories go, it seems like it's one of the slowest ones. Maybe just because there isn't really that super fast raider. Pyros are fairly quick, but let's see what their speed. 90 elmo per second. I'm not sure where Glaives are offhand. I think Glaives are something along the lines of 100-something. But I could be wrong. I'd have to double-check, and I can't right now, because neither player is playing Cloakie. Well, Akronim's been scattered out pretty well. El Torero, on the other hand, has not been scattered out whatsoever. This puppy will be able to take out... Oh, is it going to take it out? I think it will. Yep, it actually can. It can blow up a metal extractor. It shouldn't. It better be on hold fire. It is on hold fire. That's good. Because you do not want to have that happen. If you're scouting with the puppies, having them blow themselves up like that is not something you want to do until you've finished scouting out. And at this point, finishing scouting out is... Is it going to happen? Oh, this this Lotus is not done yet, but it is going to get shot. Oh! Is that a dodge? Oh, never mind. It blew itself up. I think it was trying to hit this metal extractor. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't trying to dodge the slasher missile. I mean, that wasn't a bad move. As far as dodging the slasher missiles go, that was really clever. It would have worked well against defender missiles, too. But I don't think Aquin was trying to do that. I think they were literally trying to just kill this thing. I killed a metal extractor, they were just too close and it missed. I have never seen that happen before. But yeah, you can totally dodge stuff, like when the puppy is in a missile form, the puppy's invincible. You can dodge shots that way. It's a bit of a cheap trick, but it requires so much skill to do, it requires so much attention to do that it's, I don't really, wouldn't really want to get rid of it. But that was weird. That was a miss outright. Never seen that happen. Anyway, Akadim is getting pretty far ahead, expanding very rapidly. El Torero, on the other hand, what do they have? They have, like, two Masons? Yeah, two Masons, one of which is on assist build. So they're expanding considerably slower. Their commander has gone over to the southeast, which I think is a little bit risky. I mean, they are playing light vehicles, sure, but they have the entire front of their base, and their commander has gone around the back. It's just that Aquanum can kind of pretty easily go down here or just hit it from this area. Although this is a recon comp, and it looks like El Torero is just being super aggressive. They are expanding aggressively. They want to expand into Aquanim's territory. And, well, they might just be able to do that. Placeholder, however, is going to be a major issue for these two Scorchers. The Pyro, however, is going to, it's going to risk itself, but it's not going to die. It's going to get slightly damaged. That's about it. Only slightly. And another Scorcher goes down. That's three Scorchers for the price of nothing. Absolutely free. Three free Scorchers... And the worker is in position to re reclaim them, because why not? I mean, why not have everything work out absolutely perfectly? Placeholders are awesome that way. Anyway, Akunim setting up quite nicely. El Torero does have, like I said, this very aggressive expansion pattern. Akunim does not know about it yet. They will soon. They will see there's something over here which is suspiciously out of place. Wait, what? Yeah, there's a commander there. El Torero, on the other hand, is pretty much unaware. They have a radar, but it's not in a great position. They aren't really aware of what's going on for Aquanim's base. And they have some idea, sort of. They they know what's been built to an extent, but they don't know much. They don't know where the units are. 
They have no radar coverage of El Torero, or sorry, Aquanim's base. El Torero, on the other hand, is also unknown, but Aquanim's scouting it out. But not on hold fire. That's a mistake. Ouch. I mean, it probably wouldn't have lasted too long regardless, but well, at least it knows there's defenses there. So Aquanim right now is, well, 30 metal compared to 20. Really healthy power infrastructure. Their factory is very difficult to deal with. They are... How defended are they? Not very well defended. Most of their defenses are belonging to El Torero right now. There's only a couple that belong to Aquanim. And... Nice placeholder shot again. Unfortunately, the Pyro went and died, but still, that was a good placeholder shot. Helped kill these two Scorchers. They were right inside the Pyro Corpse Flyer. Very nicely done there. Oh, right, I forgot we're dealing with... Oh, hey, Akunim's learned! I was about to say, I forgot we're dealing with Akunim. Akunim always built a caretaker before doing reclaim, but no, Akunim's reclaiming with a Freaker. Well done! Granted, it wasn't immediately, but that doesn't really matter. Actually, Akunim's reclaiming only to deny. They're a little short on metal income, right? Or metal spending right now, in fact. I mean, spending 30 per second, which is what they have as their typical rate, but yeah, that reclaim... Oh, it's just barely ex I think it might be excessing. I'm not totally sure. It's pretty close to excessing. Is that idle? No, that's not idle. Okay, anyway, they are spending it all now. Finally, but yeah, that was a slight waste. I mean, they aren't going to have to worry too much about losing this position. If they lose this position, they're probably dead. They've been playing a very close-in game. I mean, El Torero has been playing much more forward. So if El Torero loses this position right here, it's not as not as big of a deal, but at the same time, Akunim's also there, so I guess it... I don't know. You don't want to lose the front part of your base in this map. Like, this area is pretty precious. This area up here, it kind of belongs to your opponent. Like, it's easier for them to access than for you to access. Now, with jump bots, that's different. Jump bot does have the fact that they can jump over this cliff. Not a big deal. But in general, I'd say this kind of... It's easier for the blue, for the north player to get this. Easier for the south player to get the southeast. But we aren't seeing this this map. We are seeing a east-west split, not a north-south split. Which basically came to us because of jump bots. That, like, jump commander and freakers. Actually, El Torero is doing a great job taking the southeast. Pretty much right under Akunim's nose. Is Akunim even aware? No, Akunim has no idea this is going on. They have absolutely no idea. They haven't even looked. They have no suspicions and no clue. It's just completely unknown right under the nose. So El Torero is getting away with a lot. Like, seriously, they're cheating out 10 metal per second. Remember I mentioned there were about 20 metal before? Yeah, their entire metal parity right now is being cheated out from under Aquanim's nose. Now, whether or not they can actually make something of it, we'll see. This is the fight that I think will determine it. These Scorchers are doing a pretty good job, actually. Now, now El Torero is starting to even it out. Their levelers are also doing a great job, since they don't have to be as close. The placeholders aren't as effective. Also, nicely two-shotting the Pyros. Still, I wouldn't say the I would not discount the placeholders at this point. They are still a threat. The only thing is they aren't as big of a threat, but they are still a threat. If these levelers get hit together, they probably won't be able to shoot through each other, and as a result, are gonna die. Pyros will burn them to death, and they'll basically get the type counter countered. At this point, though, El Torero is, I think, in a pretty healthy spot. But Aquanim. Suspicious as they should be, finally going over to the southeast side of the map, and they will find what they've just been having happen under their nose this entire time. And the placeholder comes in. Not that handy. Sort of useful. It does split up the levelers. That is important. But there are just so many of them. There are six levelers, two getting knocked away. That's still four coming in here. And with one of the placeholders down, there's not much to stop these other than sheer firepower. And, hey, reinforcements! How about that? Although, admittedly, it would have been much better if they were together. Especially since they ended up just... What the heck? Seriously? El Torero, were you not paying attention? Ouch. Yeah, that's death. That Well, not death for El Torero, but it's death for these levelers. It's a big blow. But, gunships coming in from Akunim. Akunim finally realizes when, what's going on, but they've let El Torero get a lot of metal out of this. And a lot of production. Although, unfortunately for them, like I said, they did kind of lose a lot of that. Once again, walking into the black hole. What the heck? Don't walk into gravity wells. Generally a bad idea. I mean, I realize that as I say this, I am sitting well inside of a gravity well that I've been living in my entire life. But it's not quite the same. It's not as localized gravity well. Don't go into very local, highly localized gravity wells. 
Planets are okay. Anything smaller than that, that causes you to get crushed with other things, generally unwise, usually bad for your health. But El Torero power through that to the northwest belongs to El Torero. The southeast still pretty securely belongs to El Torero, thanks to the Razor. But El Torero's main base, however, that does not securely belong to El Torero. Getting some damage in, not getting killed though. Losing one metal extractor, ultimately not losing too much. Lost a caretaker, lost a metal extractor. Risking excess. But they should be able to get the caretakers up quickly enough that it won't be a big problem. Still mildly annoying, but El Torero in a fairly secure position. However, the Southeast taken up by Pyros, or at least getting damaged by Pyros. Bit of an issue. I, I think this is probably it. El Torero's commander not paying attention. And, well, it doesn't matter. Close enough. Getting rid of the Pyros, getting rid of the Rapiers. But all the metal extractors have been gotten rid of, so El Torero, I mean, they can get this back. They can rebuild all of this. They still basically control it. But they have to do it within the next half minute or so. Depending on whether or not Akronim goes for the counter attack. Actually, El Torero is going for the counter attack. This is a nice distraction. Great, great thinking, El Torero. That, that should distract Akronim long enough to be able to rebuild the southeast. And from there, El Torero should be able to get their economy back up and running while simultaneously harassing Akronim. Because why not? Who doesn't love harassing Akronim? Well, I'm sure Akronim doesn't. Well, I can have might if they try, but it's kind of hard. They'd have to harass themselves. But El Torero loves harassing Aquinum. Or at least they are probably enjoying the fact that they finally get to turn the tables on this. They haven't really had any harassment. They haven't gotten into the main base until the op since the opening scouts. Those opening two darts, that's been it. But now El Torero... El Torero is able to rebuild this fine enough, I think. But like I said, half a minute, they're... I don't know, it's been a bit longer than that. Aquinum wants to get rid of that, I'm sure. I mean, obviously, it's damage. Why wouldn't you want to get rid of it? But the problem... I mean, the problem right now, actually, is that El Ferrero is spending a lot of their money on anti-air. And there's two rapiers left. I hope there are no more crashes coming in from here. There are... There is still a crasher. But they do have non-crasher units coming in. They have Ravagers and Levelers, so that works okay. But these crashers are not the right unit. They are very much the wrong unit right now. They will have to be coming in later. And once again, that southeast is becoming a bit of a graveyard for El Aquinum's forces, actually. El, Tor El Torero is keeping that quite nice and efficient. Now, the only downside, of course, is this jack. That jack is coming in. It's going to be a bit of a problem. But with all these characters pushing this, yeah, that's going to be a lot of production. That's 40... Oh, well, the reclaim is basically going to X... Oh, not quite excess yet. But yeah, this jack can get destroyed. Although, this is... Oh, El Torero, jump your... There we go, jump your commander. Get back into the Lotus. It's good work, good job. That's exactly what you need to do. Get to the Lotus, for, or force the jack out. One way or the other, El Torero keeps the southeast and continues to make that a graveyard for Aquinum. Aquinum cannot break through that. It's just donating metal. Except El Torero has not actually reclaimed this yet, but I don't know how much there is. 1,000, 1,100 or so. Yeah, that's a lot of metal. That's just been donated. Well, okay, less than that's been donated. Like, 800 has been donated. That's a lot of metal still. That could... That could build about a quarter of El Torero's army. Well, yeah, because the commander counts for, I think, 2,000 or so? How much is it counting for right now? 1,500, never mind. Okay, so that's... 5,000, that's not commander. Yeah, it's about... About a sixth of the army, roughly. Sixth or a seventh of the army. That's still a pretty decent chunk. And that's just reclaim. Of the current army. So it increases that much more. And these two rapiers, the last two rapiers, because none have been rebuilt. Well, at least they're being denied. Like I said, the crashes would have their day. It just wasn't that exact moment, because the pyros are a pain in the butt. Now, where are the levelers? There are no levelers, are there? No, there are some. There are three, no, four levelers. There are two ravagers. And there's the firewalker. There's the reason you build pyro factory. I mean, pff, I keep calling it pyro factory. It's actually useful. It's got a lot of units it's useful for. But nope, it's the pyro factory. Sorry, Firewalker, you're part of the Pyro Factory. Yeah, the, that's where they build the Jumpbot Factory. That Freudian slip. I've made fun of it before, but that was back when it was actually valid. Now it's no longer valid. The Jumpbot Factory is not just the Pyro Factory. It is the Jumpbot Factory. It builds a lot of units. Like, in practice. In real games. More units than just Pyros get built. One of them is the Firewalker. Where's the Firewalker gone off to, anyway? Don't tell me it died. That'd be ignominious. No, I don't think it's dead. 
Actually, the best place we could go would be down here. And the Jack, once again, trying in vain to get rid of the Southeast. Center. Man, El Torero is just taking everything here. Ripping everything apart. The placeholders even... That's not that useful. When you're dealing with Ravagers, it's sort of useful, but they shoot over each other. So they don't even really block each other when they're in the placeholder black hole. I mean, this is nice. This is a really nice mixed force Melto Herrero. Now, uh, like I said, that's, that Jack... That Jack did nothing. Not even force retreat. It was killed. It was outright killed. It's gone. It's dead. That Jack was a waste of metal. As, well... Yeah, maybe as were these Scorchers. I mean, El Torero is just keeping Aquanim's numbers down, but at the same time, their numbers have been rising, in large part because they have this giant reclaim field over in the southeast side of the map that's pretty handily being taken care of. It's already been half reclaimed. El Torero just has a very healthy economy right now, and Aquanim is fighting just to stay still. Now, the one downside, though, is that El Torero kind of has to keep this up. Because the moment that Aquanim gets some chance to breathe, the moment that Aquanim gets an opening... In fact, Aquanim's doing it right now, which is good to see. They have 3,000... This this circle that's being built right now, that's 3,000 metal. And then there's an additional 2,000 or so metal that's slightly outside of that. So there's a lot of reclaim that's coming in here. El Torero cannot allow Aquanim to get a moment of rest. A moment of respite could turn the game around if El Torero is not careful. Or actually, to be more precise, if El Torero is too careful. If they're not forward enough. But they have managed to stop that. There is no reclaim going on in the unsafe areas, but still some in the safer areas. This reclaim is nowhere near as effective. Oh, well, how much was it? 300 metal. Not as big of a deal in this stage of the game. Would have been a bit of a problem, but not that big of a problem. Not compared to 3,000. 3,000 would last the rest of the game, no matter how long the game was. That would have been the rest of the game. But at this point, Aquanum cannot easily take that. No Freakers haven't really going forward. They probably could actually get away with it, but they aren't doing so. Still, El Torero just needs to keep their forces all together. That's what they need to do. Regroup their forces. Not too close together, of course. The placeholders do pose a problem with that. But still, as long as they get them together, they should be fine. That's been the main thing, keeping Aquanim in any good position. Is the placeholder usage has been really good. They've been keeping the... I mean, it's been good, and El Torero has been also driving into the placeholder holes. But at this point... This is probably it. I think El Torero is going to get the revenge. And I don't believe any match was actually played subsequent to this. I could check. I don't think so, though. Pretty sure this was it. But yeah, El Torero, they've won. Like, it's pretty clear just from looking at the map. They have all the territory. They've encircled these metal extractors. We'll be taking them out fairly soon. The main base, it's nowhere near impervious. There's not much coming in here. These rapiers can't really do too much either because the crashers have been in play this entire time. Right, there are still three crashers in play. None have been real. There's been a few built. I mean, El Torero has kept the production up. Right, they knew one day Akuna would try to switch up, try to go for the mix up, and well, they did. They did try. That attempt, however, was thwarted. Or at least it's getting zoned out. And it's getting zoned out in the place that matters. That's the thing. This reclaim build is what really matters. And everything's getting zoned out. Aquanum can't really take that reclaim. And El Torero has taken this entire southeast reclaim. They've pretty much taken the entire southeast. They've, they've held this the entire game. That's been a huge... The fact that they were able to cheat that much money out there, take it out from Aquanum's nose, that was a big deal. That basically handed El Torero the game. I mean, at the beginning of the game, we saw that El Torero was not doing too hot. They were, they were okay, but... I mean, unit counters were working nicely, but still, they were not in a safe spot. They were actually behind economically. There was a little while where Akronim had 30 and El Torero had 20, and then they just got all this metal. And it turned right around. The entire game turned around just because El Torero had so much money they could keep pressuring Aquanim. And ultimately, that's game, so that's 1-1. One, one. I am curious, did they play another game after this? Because if they did, I probably should have checked for that instead of doing the Evalos Mananeris game, which was, frankly, not all that interesting. Sorry, Bistrushim and Veltos, but Valis Mananeris is not the most interesting map. But it looks like that was it. That was, in fact, the most recent game that El Torero, El Torero has played. So yeah, El Torero and Aquadim, this series, I guess, little mini thing they did. One and one. Didn't bother to go for the tiebreaker, apparently. Just played two, and that was it. 
Hope you enjoyed that. Inconclusive though it was, it was still a very interesting match. Good demonstration of why it's a very important idea to scout out areas where your opponent might get economy or where you might want to get economy. Because these corners, both players went for it, but El Torero was actually able to hold it. Aquinum barely went for it before El Torero got it. I mean, El Torero was going over here. El Torero had it in mind that Aquinum would probably try to do the same thing. But they had it in their head. Aquinum apparently did not have it in their head that El Torero might go for the southeast until it was too late. Until it had been well enough defended that there was nothing that could easily be done without pushing a huge amount of the force out of position or just donating a ton of metal, and mostly a lot of metal was donated. The force distribution, I think, was fine. I think Aquinum did a pretty good job in making sure they didn't push too much to the southeast. But yeah, the metal was still donated. It didn't quite work. It got close once. A couple, I mean, it nearly destroyed the entire sec section here. It was almost gone. But that commander was a huge asset over the southeast. If El Torero's commander had died, I think the game might have gone considerably differently. It would have made it a lot easier, because there would have been far less metal, the entire section would have been destroyed. The reclaim wouldn't have happened, or at least it would have been harder to have happened. Aquinum could probably have claimed that, because there wouldn't have been much except for a couple Lotuses. And then from there, it would have been basically the... It would have at least stabilized for Aquinum. And then Aquinum would have had a chance to push forward again. But yeah, that was how the game went. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So I forgot to point out, I should have pointed out the first game, because I don't know how many people watched the last game... I guess I'll have to put these all on YouTube simultaneously just to make this public. But, as usual, being it is the last Saturday of the month this Saturday, the 1v1 0k monthly tournament is happening. It is at 10 a.m. UTC, so, as always, well, 3 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 6 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 10 a.m. in West, like, Super Western Europe, like England, 11 a.m. Central, 12 a.m. in Eastern Europe, and, sorry, 12 p.m. Sorry, not 12 a.m. Not midnight. And in Australia, I think it's somewhere around 7 in the evening. Anyway, 6 or 7 in the evening. So yeah, that is going to be a tournament, as usual, every month. So sign up in the forums. Doesn't matter if you don't think you're very good. Sign up in the forums anyway. It is, I believe, still random seating. Double elimination random seating. So you do get three matches because it is, it's best of one in the loser's bracket. So even if you lose, you still get to play three games, not just two. Yes, it is random seating. So we, you, if you aren't very good, you will, may get up against someone who is also not very good, and at least be able to do something. But yeah, join up with the tournament. I'm sorry I didn't mention that sooner. I should have mentioned that in the first game. Kind of sucks. I'm gonna have to basically flood my YouTube channel to make sure that people know. Also, I'm putting it at the end of the video. I'll just put it in all the descriptions. Hopefully, people read those. I don't know if they do. That aside, news aside, that is it. Thank you all for watching, everybody, and have a good night.